Hey guys, it's Adam Levitan here at Fantasy Labs. Can tell him at Fantasy Labs because we have Peter's cut off forehead here. Anyway, today I'm going to be talking about the way I like to use Fantasy Labs uniquely. And this kind of came to me because I had some people say, hey, Fantasy Labs is great, but everybody has it. So it's just spitting out these numbers that everybody has and there's not any type of edge to having it. Now, first of all, uh, that's not a true statement that everybody has it. Uh, Bales and Peter and myself wish that everybody had Fantasy Labs, but it's just not true. But that's besides the point. More importantly, there's so many ways to use all the data and all the tools uniquely. And when people say, quote unquote, everybody uses it the same way, we're talking about just going to NBA going to player models and looking at who the best plays are and putting them into our lineups. Or we're talking about going to lineups, going to the optimizer, clicking optimize, waiting for it to spit a lineup out and playing that exact lineup. Now, of course, that's not a unique way. That only took us about five seconds. It's going to take more work than five seconds to create unique winning lineups, especially for tournaments. And one thing I want to say about the optimizer, it's not really the way it was intended for to just click it and put lineups in. You know, it was intended more to give you an idea of roster construction or to exclude players or to raise the um, exposure on certain players when you make uh, multiple lineups and then optimize from there. So massaging the optimizer, I think, is more the way to go than just taking the optimal lineup from the fan model and rolling with that. But anyways, what I'm going to talk about today is how I use trends and models to make unique lineups or have unique thoughts. And I know I've done a video on trends before. I call this kind of trend modeling. It's not really trends and it's not really modeling. It's somewhere in between. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my trends page and you'll see I have some trends up here already. So basically what I've done here is these are trends that I've built that I know have a really good expectation. So this one I call usage gods. Any salary, these are the parameters that I set. Any salary, projected usage is between 20 and 40, projected minutes is at least 15.1, players projected plus minus is at least five, and the team is at least at neutral pace or up in pace. So pace D just stands for pace differential. Um, the Kings are the fastest pace team in the league. So anytime they're playing, they're down in pace. They would have a negative number here. Pace D for most other teams or every other team can either be neutral or up in pace. So I found a solid count here of 620, a very solid plus minus of 6.73, and a consistency rating, how often does a player quote unquote meet salary versus meet his value versus salary expectation. Good number here, 71.9. So every day I'll come to this trend and just real quick, I'll just click on my trends, click on usage gods, and I'll go to current matches. And it'll pop out for me who meets these parameters right now. So tonight, Monte Ellis. This is uh, Tuesday. Uh, Monte Ellis, LaMarcus Aldridge, Kyle Lowry, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, all meet these parameters tonight that yield a positive 6.73 expectation versus salary. And this might change throughout the day as Justin goes through and massages his projections. We might get a different plus minus on guys, but pace differential is going to stay the same. Obviously, salary is going to stay the same. So we just, I, you know, I'll check again later around three or four o'clock. And then I'll check again around five or six o'clock to see if Justin has changed his usage projection or minutes projection for any of these guys that would take him out of this usage guys trend. So this isn't any type of fancy model. This isn't uh, anything confusing. It's just simply some parameters that I built that yield a really positive expectation and have a good count. And it very quickly comes out and tells me who's there tonight. So the reason this is unique is because not everybody has these parameters set up in their trends. And I'm not saying this is the best trend. I've seen people come up with trends that have, you know, 2,000 or 3,000 in their count 
and a positive expectation of seven, eight, nine. So you can mess with these. I mean, there's so many things here that we can mess with. Just play with it. And one of the really cool things about Fantasy Labs is as you mess with things, you can see what the count and the plus minus is going to go to. It's just a huge time saver. So as I move this up, I can see if I move to 2.9, the count goes down, plus minus stays the same. So I wouldn't do that. I would keep it here. Count 496, or I would go back to where I was. Even count 620, still 6.73. So a really easy way to do that. So again, messing with all these parameters and do stuff that speaks to you. You know, this kind of the usage stuff speaks to me. Minutes, projected plus minus, pace differential. That all speaks to me because I think it makes sense when a team is up in pace. When a guy has the ball, ball in his hands a lot. When a guy is going to play a reasonable amount of minutes. All that speaks to me. I think it makes sense. So this is a trend that I like. By the way, real quick on usage. I know that Brian Mears has written some about how usage is somewhat of a flawed stat. And I understand what he's saying because it counts turnovers and it counts missed shots. And those are obviously bad things for us in fantasy. But I still think usage is an important stat because I want to know what happens when a guy plays towards the top of his range. So if he has the ball in his hands, let's say, 100 times in a game, I, if he's missing shots and turning the ball over, you know, that's a um, results-oriented stat. I need, I want stats that include if he really plays really well. So let's say one day Kyle Lowry just plays out of his mind and he doesn't turn the ball over at all and he makes every shot. You know, usage is a predictive stat in that it's how often he'll have the ball in his hands. What he does with it afterwards is up to him. So I'm looking for spots where uh, I think he'll play really well. And I think that, you know, it'll be towards the top of his range, meaning fewer turnovers, fewer missed shots, etc. But anyways, back to this. Uh, I hope you guys can see how you can use a bazillion of these data points and messing with them. And it's going to take some time to mess with them and create your own trend here where it spits out guys that you like. And maybe I wasn't really looking at Monte Ellis tonight, you know. I don't really use guards against Boston. And maybe I still won't. But at least it's on my radar now that Monte Ellis could be in play tonight, at least for tournaments based on this. I mean, he fits all these parameters, which have a 6.73 uh, plus minus, which is really strong. Okay, then I have some narrower trends that I like to look at. Um, this one I call point God. So any salary, the player plays point guard. This is a point guard at home. This is a point guard that's the underdog. This is a point guard that's up in pace significantly, at least plus 1.9, and a point guard that's expected to play at least 20 minutes. Now, I'm not going to go completely overboard here and be super excited about it because it's only a count of 129, and these numbers aren't great. They're good, 4.29 on the positive side, 65.1. They're good. They're not great. So I would want to mess with this before I went too far, but these are situations that I like to use point guards tonight. There's only you know one situation like that, the Lakers point guards. So D'Angelo Russell and Jordan Clarkson. Obviously, Clarkson's playing off the ball now, even though he's listed as a point guard on DraftKings. He's playing shooting guard, so I would lean more towards using Russell under this. You know, but these are just more trends that I have that lead me towards current matches for guys that I may or may not have already looked at for that day. Um, this one I call nuts. Any salary, players the home team project to play at least 20 minutes. Opponent plus opponent position plus minus, meaning how is their DVP matchup at least plus three. High total game, at least 209, at least 210 on, on the total. And pace up above 2.2. So again, a small count here, which I don't like, but a big number here and a big number here. So I'll go to this on any given day. I'll see who currently matches. Tonight, it's only Brooke Lopez and all the Lakers guys. So this is kind of a short slate, six games. I believe tomorrow there's 10 or 11 games. I would have more current matches here. So all these things are unique things that I built. It's not going to player models and clicking the optimizer. It's not going to player models and just playing all the guys that are in bright green. It's using the Fantasy Labs trends to create my own and then get my own matches and go from there. And that's a really good way to find tournament plays. I think it's a way to be really confident um, and some of the plays that you think are off the board somewhat.
Other thing I want to talk about quickly today is pro trends. I think this is a unique thing that, that people aren't using enough of. So on any given day, I will go through and, and sort by pro trends and see what stands out. 14 is a massive amount of pro trends. And for people that don't know what pro trends is, you can just click on them and see. These are things that we have found at Fantasy Labs that lead to a positive expectation. You know, small things, uh, averaging at least 30 minutes per game, simple. Raises your expectation, 0.89. Usage at least 20, 1.08. That, you know, go through all these, they're all very small, but add them together and we have something really major. And I'll show you uh, the proof of that in a little bit. So 14 is a ton. You know, these are all things that are in DeMarcus Cousins' favor tonight. Um, all these things. Price dropped 500 over the last month on DraftKings is a big one, plus 1.49. Bargain rating, top 20% is a big one, plus 1.69. Upside rating, at least 50% in the last month, plus 1.82. So these are all kind of quote-unquote trends that we were talking about before, but ones that we've already found have really good expectations. So... I want to show you quickly how this manifests. So I go to my pro trends trends. So as you can see, player with at least 14 pro trends never had more than 15. Player with at least 14 pro trends is very rare. It's only happened nine times in the last two years. And obviously it is completely smashed. So nine times average ex expectation was 36.53 points for these players. They scored 50.53 for a 14 point zero plus minus just outrageous and a consistency of 88.9 now count nine these numbers i would not um be sold on you know i wouldn't blindly play a guy because of this but 14 pro trends is a pretty good sign that you're going to have a good game current matches obviously as i already talked about demarcus cousins tonight Past results we see here, Rondo smashed. I mean, Gasol against the Blazers. Um, I believe that was like two weeks ago. Just completely went ham. Cousins, when he played the Clippers, completely ham. Brooke Lopez, 20 points over expectation. Marcus Gasol went under, but DeMarcus Cousins, 40 points over expectation. Marcus Gasol, 17 points, et cetera, et cetera. So only kind of nine again, but 14 pro trends is just like, when I look at that, I almost have to play the guy because of these numbers here. Now let's see what happens if we if a guy has, let's say, 13, exactly 13 pro trends. So now the count goes up to 48. So we're getting a stronger count there. Plus minus goes down to 4.0, is still solid, and consistency of 66.7. So solid, you know, current matches here. Isaiah Thomas has 13 pro trends tonight on DraftKings. Let's edit this again. Let's say they, let's just say they have at least 10 pro trends up to 15. So now we're getting a much bigger count, 1253. This is a really huge count. This is something I would actually rely on. Positive expectation of 3.19, consistency 60.2. So nothing earth shattering, but definitely a positive expectation when a guy has at least 10 pro trends. So again, the way you see that, I don't think people use this column very much. Just the pro trends column. You can click on them to see what they are. There's Kyle Lowry's pro trends tonight, 10 of them. And when I see 14, my eyes are wide open. When I see 13, my eyes are very open. But really when I see trend, pro trends of at least 10, it, it's something that I'm at least uh, considering no matter where they come out in their rating. So those are two things that I think uh, we can use to be somewhat unique on fantasy labs especially using the trends your own parameters to create kind of a spit out model so that you can look at every single night and once you have the model yeah it might take you an hour two hours three hours of playing with the parameters before you find a model that you like before you find parameters that you like but once you have it then every night it takes one second to click on it and spit out who fits those parameters so work on getting that count high work on getting that consistency high Use all the different data points that you can. And I think you'll really have something unique that you personally can use every night. Again, if you ever have any ideas for these videos, feel free to shoot me an email, ajl201 at yahoo.com. If not, for Jerry, I am Adam. Good luck, everybody.